A lot of you right now may be at home doing an extra load of laundry, cleaning up some of the bed sheets. Some children, and we're looking at a large amount of them, we're looking at a stat over 500,000 Canadians five years of age or older are experiencing bedwetting. And so it's a topic of conversation today and it will actually be a topic of conversation later on at Bayshore Shopping Centre between 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. today, allowing uh, parents, caregivers to be able to get in and share their stories. Joining us from Savvy Moms uh, and also a mom who had two children who are affected with bedwetting is Sarah Morgenstern. Great to have you on the show. Thank you. And also pediatrician uh, Dr. Sydney Carter. So great to have you both here. Nice this, to be here. This is a wonderful opportunity later on today uh, at Bayshore to have a group of moms, parents, caregivers to come together and chat about this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we wanted to get the message out uh, that this is not something that uh, you need to sort of experience alone. As you mentioned, there's thousands of children that are experiencing bedwetting. It's not it's a medical condition it's not something that children are doing intentionally it's not something that means you were a bad parent and you did something wrong and we wanted to just share our stories about that and you know get some ideas out on uh, around the campfire so to speak about how um, how we can you know help each other to, to try to you know make it better for our families was this something that was uh, essential for you and the communication because you have two children both you have three children it affected two of them both right. a girl and a boy to be able to kind of express and talk about it yeah um, exactly as you said my first I didn't experience this with my first so I didn't realize it was as common as it is and then when my second and third who were daytime trained at age three but then continued nighttime uh, bedwetting for you know five years after basically um, fortunately my pediatrician had you know would ask each year about how things are going and you know I learned from her that it was a medical condition and so I I was able to sort of you know not feel all, you know the guilt or anything like that but um, and she was able to share ideas about what we could do about it when you know when it became a, a problem for the kids we're talking about it right now because it's summer kids are going to visit grandma they want to go to overnight camps, sleepovers, things like that. That's when it can get really hard for families to, uh, uh, it's okay when it's sort of in the privacy right. of your own home, but when you get outside that, it, it can get a lot more complicated, especially as kids get older with, you know, peer groups and things like that. It starts to affect them a lot more. And, and as we were talking about, this is a medical condition, and so you must have a lot of parents that come into your office saying, what can I do, how can we help, and why is this happening? Uh, indeed, uh, in a primary care practice, um, this is a, a common condition. And as Sarah points out, um, uh, it runs in families very often, uh, almost always, uh, and it is a developmental problem, but uh, causes a, a fair amount of social um, discomfort, and uh, there is help available for these kids. And that's uh, really the main message that I could give to families if uh, they present this problem to me. Um, and and the, the treatment is safe uh, as long as parents understand the underlying uh, problem and uh, the science behind it. We're looking at children, you know, wh at what age do you start to, to say, okay, this is somewhat of a concern that, you know, they're at the age where maybe you would think that they're recognizing that they should be getting up or that they can't control it? Yeah, usually by the age of five, most children have accomplished a nighttime continence. Uh, much earlier during the daytime hours uh, because they're awake because one of the problems uh, uh, as many of us know is that these kids are very very deep sleepers and it interferes with the natural mechanism uh, in arousing uh, anyone for that matter uh, including people like myself to get up in the middle of the night and uh, do the right thing uh, but being uh, in a state of very deep sleep it can alter that arousal mechanism. So um, between five and six, most children are trained. Uh, uh, after that age, uh, it's a problem. And uh, then we should look at ways and means of addressing, treating this problem. Uh, there's a, it's a topic that you could probably talk on a lot, and there's, I'm sure, a lot of moms and people at home sitting, I want more answers. We can't get to them right now, but there is an opportunity later today. So that is exactly what you're looking for. You'll be there to be able to answer the questions, and you'll have the dialogue with a lot of the mm -hmm. other moms. And so, again, you're looking for people. Anyone is welcome to come down. Anyone at Bayshore Mall on the main level near the Blue Note store will be set up there for a, a campfire chat about this uh, common problem. A campfire chat, yeah. which you're hoping the kids will be able to experience the campfire exactly. and feel yeah, pretty good about exactly. being there. Yeah. Uh, again, it's happening uh, today on the main floor, 11 a.m. until 1 p.m. Uh, a pleasure to meet both of you, and Thank best you. of luck with your kids and your practice. And uh, we're going to uh, hand things over right now. We're just going to go right next door. Right